So everybody, we're back. Uh, welcome back to the Mafia Unveiled, the John and Gene Show. And today I got a special edition, and I want to discuss uh, something that's. Uh, I, I got to tell you, I've discussed it in different ways, but not fully. So today I'm going to discuss it in, in you know step by step fully. And for the people that uh, this is a the Mafia Wars, meaning. The mafia and the FBI. People scrutinize and call people rats and talk like children. Right? And some of those things that guys that are from the street, uh, what they believe in as a young kid changes after spending decades in prison, uh, maturity, experience, and uh, the betrayal of the street life. But I'm going to start off with this. These are my shoes. Can you see them? So unless you walked in these fucking shoes, then you got no opinion. So you got no right to talk about the mafia, the street life, uh, the FBI, or my personal beliefs. You want to have your own personal beliefs? Go ahead. You know, a friend of mine said this to me last week, and I've been using it a lot. You know, guys that troll on this thing, you are the second floor people. You know, you used to yell out the fire escape windows, how tough you are, and you do all that talk. And you ain't really about shit. And I'd say, and I've said it before, probably 98% of the mob guys ain't about shit. They're full of shit. So, and I'm going to explain that after I get into some of the other things, but let's talk about numbers. The whole mafia meaning the whole Bonanno family from the boss down ratted. So anybody that was about any kind of violence or shooting or killing, for the most part, 99.9% of you, if you were about anything, I'm talking about the present guys, you would have been in prison for years. And if you chose to go to prison and you stayed in prison and you didn't cooperate any, against anybody and you think that's a good thing because no one betrayed you, that's your business. I'm not, guess, I'm not uh, questioning what you did. Anybody in the Colombo family during the wars, the whole family got dismantled because they were all right. And then, like I always say, you could go through every family, through every country. You could go through Sammy Gravano and all the Gambino bosses that they ratted. And the people that were about anything, if you're doing any kind of killing, shooting, serious crimes, you would have went to prison. And if you didn't, you weren't going to go to prison because you didn't do much. So in this generation for the last probably at least 15 years now, there's only been a handful of killings. Handful. And they didn't do it themselves. They sent it out for other people to do that work. Just like they used to do with the Westies, or they did with Roy DeMeo, or they did with guys like me, or they did it with the, a black uh, organization, or street kids, or you know, Spanish guys. For the most part, the mafia hasn't done its own work in a long time. And they haven't done work in prisons. And they really don't know anything outside their neighborhoods. But now let me get into why I'm, I'm doing this, this show. There's guys that cooperated. And whether I use Sammy Gravano or I use some of these other guys that cooperated recently. And... Uh, if you're not afraid, you wouldn't be going to Woodstock. If you're not afraid, you wouldn't be living in another state. And if you're going to judge people, uh, the FBI or a gangster, uh, sorry to say, but I'm not like everybody else. I'm going to call it the way it is. I have no regrets in my life. I could give a fuck about the street guys. They're all full of shit. Like I said, no, I shouldn't say all, but most are full of shit. They ain't about anything. They're not, they're not out there as killers. They talk a good game. Some of them made it, did one thing or two things, and that's about it. But when you sign up for the street, you know exactly what you're signing up for. As a young guy, you're signing up because you want to make money. You want to beat the system and try to hustle and, and, and get rich fast. And then you're insecure, so you need a lot of guys with you because you can't stand on your own two feet. That's why none of these guys that grew up in these neighborhoods ever travel anywhere. 
You don't see them in other states, other countries. Never getting locked up out of this country because they won't be able to handle stand on their own two feet. But the guys that do cooperate, I have a problem with because here's the difference. Law enforcement, when they grow up, the ones that aren't corrupt, the ones that are legitimately working hard and doing the right thing, they signed up to go to school, to get educated, to protect society, protect the laws and the Constitution. They come straight at you and tell you what they believe in. That's what they believe in. They go home to their families and they live a conducive good life. The mob guys are the opposite. They sign up to betray whoever they can to get the dollar bill. They sign up to kill their friends, to go in the backseat of somebody's or a coffee shop where it doesn't take anybody to pull a trigger. And they don't even do that. But when I hear guys talking against guys in law enforcement, and I don't particularly like the Washington, D.C. bureaucrats. I think they're full of shit. You know, Christopher Reyes and uh, DOJ Garland. Yeah, I believe they're corrupt. I believe they have an agenda. They're political. But the everyday police officer that hits the street and the everyday FBI agent that hits the street, they have good intentions. Their intentions are to follow our Constitution, follow law. There's nothing personal. You know, there was a guy, Sweeney, that locked me up years ago. He came with a team of guys, kicked my door in, and uh, brought me to jail. And uh, later on, my investigator seen me walking around uh, Cherry Hill Mall at the time. And, and I introduced her. She didn't know who he was, thought maybe he was a gangster, that didn't realize he was the guy that locked me up. And I ran into him, and his children were doing a Christmas carol at the mall at the time. And then... I was nice to him, I respect him, and in turn, he was nice to me. And actually, when I went to court for my bail hearing, he stood up. And the judge asked why he was standing up, speaking up for me. And he says, well, the guy's not going to run. He's a gentleman. He doesn't give us all the time when he arrests him. He is a gangster. That's what he do does. And, you know, I, in my opinion of, of this guy, if you give him bail, he won't go nowhere. And this is, you know, in the early, uh, I think, uh, mid-90s or early 2000, that was, before I took off later on on serious cases. But I didn't hate the guy. His job, I know what his job is. His job is to arrest me because I'm breaking the law, because I'm shooting people, I'm killing people, I'm selling drugs, I'm robbing people. And the FBI's job is to do that, to come investigate us. So what are you getting? What, I'm, what I don't get is, if there's... I don't know, between each crew, there's probably 100,000 guys out there between a couple hundred made guys in each family and then associates and then their friends, associates of associates. There's got to be 100,000 guys out there. And out of those 100,000 guys, I love when they call everybody a rat because half of them or three quarters of them or more, I should say more than three quarters of them, either have family members that are police officers, prosecutors, judges, or do something in law enforcement. So the, here's the first uh, part of them being full of shit. So if your family member is a sergeant in the police, he's not a rat, or he is a rat. Well, you just tell your friends that. It's like guys that go run around and tell everybody, uh, you know, hey, I banged that girl. Because you sound like idiots. You're just talking against your own family and friends that you grew up with at some of them. They work hard, they go home, they want to do their job, get paid, and go home. That's what they signed up for. Is it any secret that they're trying to arrest us because we're breaking the law? No. So here's my problem. When I hear these guys that cooperated and they're complaining and then they're trying to take the side of the street guys now, you're already ratted. You made your choice. You already cooperated. And everybody's got their reasons why. Right? I got my reason that I, I end, ended up getting away from the street world. I got no qualms about it. I got betrayed. And like I always say, I'm not Italian, I'm Albanian. You fuck me, I fuck you back. I don't really care. I don't have no qualms about hiding that fact. And I'm no different person. My DNA is the same as it always was. 
So I believe in what I believe in. I believe in loyalty. If you don't give loyalty, you're not getting loyalty from me. The difference of these guys that you put yourself out there, you go on a podcast, and I initiated all these podcasts. So let's get that straight. I'm the first guy that started this. So all you guys that are doing podcasts, you got it from me when you felt, felt it was safe to go out there and do podcasts because I initiated this stuff. And after a while, you all joined in. And then you got the other guys that never were in the street and they're doing podcasts like they know something about the street. They know shit about the street. They're not involved in the street. They weren't committing crimes in the street. They're just reading something or getting a story off of somebody and they keep following the inaccuracies of their storyline, which is not even close to being true. They have no idea what it is to be an associate, to be made, to be anything in, in, in the mob world. And I brought this to somebody already, and I've said this already. You go work in a, in a store, you go work in a factory, you, work, you work, work on in Wall Street, and you have a family member or friend that is in a position, they're going to hire you. They're going to raise you up into a position you probably don't deserve. Some people deserve it, but you get there in a quick way It's because of not what you are or how tough you are or how much earning capacity you have. It's who you know. That's life. So it's no great shakes to be straightened out for the people that are all enamored with that, all the trolls that follow them around, because you're clueless about that life. Like anything else, the power comes from intelligence, money, and violence. And if you're any of those things, all three of those things, you control. But the weak people are the ones that need a group of guys. And without the group of guys, you're not okay. So some of you guys that cooperated and you're out there doing podcasts, and I hear he's blaming the FBI. First you blame the mobsters, now it's the FBI's fault. You knew well, you knew exactly what you were getting into when you sat down with them and what you were gonna do for them. You made your deal because of whatever happened in your life in the mob world. And I'm not judging that. I'm not gonna judge any man of whatever position. I am not even judging the guys that are on the street. I'm just I'm just stating facts. Do you wanna stay on the street? You know the rules of those street. If you wanna stay on the street, you know rule number one, mob boss is right. You want to lie to yourself? They don't. Go ahead. Rule number two, you know as long as you're on the street, you have the possibility of being killed. And you know that rule number three, you're going to get betrayed. That's part of the life. There is no dignity. There is no honor. There is no, he's my buddy. He's my friend. That all goes out the window. Just what happened to John Gotti Sr. When he went to prison, no one gave a shit about him no more. It's over. You're just a lost, you're a gone entity. When you're Joe Messina and you get pinched and there's no way out and you're in a, in a corner, you decided to wear a wire. That's your choice. You made it. Whatever reasons that you felt that you had to make that choice now that he's passed away, he made that choice. His underboss made the same choice. His concierge made the same choice. A dozen of his captains made the same choice. Albert Anastasia, that everybody seems to look up to, but they want to leave out the part that he ratted on Lepke. He made his choice. The old mafia, the old mustache peats, they would get, have cops that worked for them. They had agents that worked for them. They'd give information up against their other crew. So this little kid attitude and this naive attitude that people are talking about, about the, the, you know, the stand-up guys, stand-up what? Stand-up what? If they saw stand-up guys, Sam Rigovano would have been dead because they believe in that. They sacrificed their life to kill somebody else to go to jail for the rest of their life. They don't believe in that. Albert Anastasia didn't believe in that. That's why he gave up Lepke. Lucky Luciano didn't believe in that. That's why when he got pinched with heroin as a young kid, he talked. And the, the names go on. We can go through these names on a regular basis. Every And how many informants are out there? Willie Boy Johnson's that was an informant the whole time. Whether he was a nice guy and whatever reasons, he was an informant. Doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is the way some of you guys that are on podcasts, if you're afraid and you're trying to kiss ass now because of some of these guys on the street are intimidating you, then stay off the air. And if you're afraid and you're at it, stay in WITSEC. But if you want to pretend you're this tough guy and then you want to blame the agents, they manipulated you, it really, it's, 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 I don't know the word. It's a fucking cunt thing to do. You guys are pussies. 
I says, because you ain't got men enough to stand up on your own. You know, there's guys that I talk to that are active. There's guys that I talk to that are, are guys that cooperate. And here's the only difference between me and you guys, and you could say anything you want. Uh, if I ever got a hall pass from the FBI and I could do what I wanted to some of these big mouths, I'm not you guys. I don't need anybody. I've done it day and night over and over again. And I'll say it again for you big mouths that are in the mob or are active or not active. They never cracked an egg. They never went to jails. You never, you just never did anything. And you talk against the FBI. That's because they didn't put the cuffs on you yet. Because you're not facing life sentences. Because you never killed nobody. You just talk a good game. And most of the mob guys, 95% of them, talk a good game. These are all full of shit. The difference, again, the FBI guys that I interacted with, I'm not shy to say. They're gentlemen. They did their job. And that's that. Same with most of the police I work with. Right? These guys locked me up, beat me up, and different things. That was their job. I knew what they were doing. They worked against me. I worked against them. I chose this life. But unlike you guys that are bashing away at the FBI saying, oh, they tricked me, they, they, they intimidated me, they, these are full of shit. And, and, it, and it's funny because some of the agents that I do talk to, you know, they still stick up for you guys and say, well, you know, they got problems. Well, bullshit. What problem? Nobody put a gun to your head and told you to go rat. Nobody put a gun to your head and said, go cooperate. Nobody put a gun to your head and told you wear a wire. Nobody put a gun to your head and said anything. It's the opposite, actually. All your so-called friends that you're talking about on the street, they, they go and they'll pickpocket you. They'll try to date your wife when you're in jail. They'll rat on you and form on you, steal your money. Am I saying something that's not true? I just, so, and, and then when you get the trolls that don't put their face up, on Instagram or Facebook or one of these things. And they, and they write, oh, I'm going to be tough today. I'm going to type away. I'm going to make my wife think I'm a, a killer, a tough guy. I'm going to make my kids think I'm a gangster. A gangster doesn't need to have 100 guys. A gangster doesn't need to have 1,000 guys. A gangster that wants to be a real gangster stands on his own two feet. But any imbecile that thinks that they're involved with guys and they betray you and you're a gangster because you let them betray you, you're a jerk off. I said, so that's my opinion. You can have your own opinion. But my opinion is all you guys that pretend that you're the gangsters, and, I, and again, I'm going to say 95% of you is because this ain't 1970s, 80s, or 90s where all kinds of guys are putting in work. Nobody knows who's really doing it. So when you got the trolls talking, this guy's full of shit, that guy's full of shit, it's very easy to get paperwork on everybody. Everybody's got lawyers. It doesn't cost a lot of money. Everybody knows who's real and who isn't real. For the guys that are in Utah or another, you know, another place, well, I shouldn't say Utah because my friend's name is an ex-Latin king. By the way, I want to say hello to you, Chuck. But you got a lot of guys in these other parts of the world that don't really understand the street or the world, the street world, gangsters, my community of black friends and Spanish friends, right? But I understand the mob world. It's built on nothing but lies, betrayal, uh, con men, bragging, braggadocious guys that never did anything. But they wear a suit. They got a couple of bucks for wherever they got their money. And they, they, they stay on the street. I mean, I can use a million guys' names. Louis, Louis Lazanaro, right? Uh... He's a, just a big dummy. Got baseball batted. Stays with the same guys that baseball batted him. Just how stupid he is. Ton of money. Grew up a spoiled little fuck. Walks around, smokes a cigarette, pretends like he's a gangster. Right? He's just lucky he didn't run into the wrong guy that didn't beat him to death or shoot him in the head because he stays in his little zone. And he didn't cross guys like me the wrong way because if he did, they would leave him there. And like I said, the only difference is my only, I, I have no qualms about any of those guys in the past because they're not real friends. My real friends that I grew up since some childhood are legitimate guys that are great guys. They're always around with me. They're always stay friends. The guys I stay with now, nice guys, tough guys, you know, fighters, legitimate fighters, UFC, MMA, professional fighters, firemen. 
Those are the nice guys in the world. But this is really not about the street guys. It's more about the guys that cooperated and is making excuses because they think if they kiss ass to the guys that they went against, all of a sudden they're going to say, well, he's not a bad guy. You're in no man's land, guys, because you're not public enough because you're afraid to walk around. So you just go hide in some fucking corner of the world or someplace where you think you're safe and you stay in your little zone. And then you blame the FBI like they did something to you. But yet you want to talk about mob stories, and but you're not mobsters anymore. And even at the time when you're mobsters, you didn't really do much. Because if you did, you, would, you wouldn't be shy about talking about setting it up. Let's look at this piece of paper and you would say, let me walk you through the first time I shot somebody. Let me say their name. Let me say their place. Let me tell you how we set it up. You would talk about the first time you stabbed somebody. But most guys will stop at the one shooting and the one stabbing, if that. I don't even, majority guys, no. And there's some nice guys out in the mob that I've talked about that I thought were real gentlemen, nice guys. Jerry from the Bronx, one of the nicest guys who was a gentleman. Charlie Luciano, Blackie Luciano, he's passed away. One of the nicest guys in the world. Gangster. All right. uh, Joey Scopo, that got killed. One of the nicest gentlemen around. He chose the wrong life, but he was a nice guy gentleman. Me, I always liked Johnny Knick. Tough guy, fun guy, money-making guy. That was his path. I don't begrudge anybody, belittle anybody for that life, but at least these guys are real guys. They were real gangsters and gentlemen at the same time. And I'm not advocating for that life, but I'm advocating against these guys that talk against the law enforcement guys. Because any dealings I had with them since I changed my life, they've been gentlemen. They're nice guys. They never betray you. I don't got to worry about them coming from behind me and shoot me in the head. I don't worry about going to get a cup of coffee. And they ask one of their other friends, hey, can you shoot on the back of the head? I changed my life because I wanted a different life. I wanted to be there for my family. I wanted to be there for my grandson, especially after I lost my daughter. I wanted a different life. I know I'm not like most of these guys. I'm not a dummy. I own businesses my whole life. I don't have the insecurities they do. They don't have my DNA. There's guys out there that tell fake stories about me every day, that they abuse me on a telephone. And anybody that knows me from jails, all the fighting, and there's a lot of, and I'm talking about a lot of the guys that are very active, high-ranking guys now in different families. They were in prisons with me. They know nobody's going to abuse me anywhere. Not in person, not on a telephone, not in a club, not in a bar, not in a restaurant. That's all nonsense. And, you know, so we all had incidences over our lives. But the difference is every time I had an incident, somebody that tried to do something to me, I went out and I killed him or I shot him. Or I batted him or I stabbed him. And the only difference now is I got another chance at life and I put my ego away. But I'm still the same guy. So when the difference is when I talk about some of these other guys that are hiding other places, I'm not. And I don't want, and I don't bother nobody. And I'm not looking to kill anybody. And I'm not looking to, to butcher anybody. But I don't need anybody to do it with me. I don't need to call somebody to ask them to do that for me. I do it. And anybody that really knows me knows no one's going to talk to me no stupid way. Ain't happening. And so when they try to make themselves feel like they got balls, they got none. It's very easy, like I said, with five or ten guys. And it's very easy to blame everybody for your life. I don't blame my father. I made my own choices. I had a crazy life. But like I was saying for these big mouths that talk, I used to be black boxed. I was diesel therapy all over Florida for years when I got back from Brazil. I was chained with one hand on a bars and showered that way. That's how I was treated. I was black boxed and I was belly chained and leg iron chained in Florida while I was on a telephone. So people know the speaker, where you talk to, I used to put my ear against it to listen and to talk in that same thing while I was chained up. I was in glass cells. I was in camera cells. They moved me around nonstop 
24-7. They used to bring me every couple of days to a new place, a new joint, and lock me in again and reprocess me in. And they did this to me for, for a long time, maybe a year, year and a half. That's how I got treated. When I was in Brazil, uh, the guys that I named through some of my podcasts know me. They know how many guys I stabbed in those jails. They know how many guys I fought. Guys that knew me from Fairton, ton of Philly guys. They knew I fought there. In Allenwood, Philly guys see me to see me fight there. And the size of the guys that I was fighting. I didn't fight one, two guys. I fought a bunch of guys actually to jump one guy. And, and he wasn't really my friend, just an Italian guy that I seen I think these guys jump, so I jumped in. I had my old cellmate, Yancey, that did a show about it. So when guys talk and you know, everybody's challenging you now. They're challenging me because they know that I'm not going to do what I used to do. I decided to change my life for the better. I decided to be around for my children. And yeah, if they talk like that or they did something aggressive towards my family, of course I'm going to be the same guy. And those same guys know. I, I don't care. I did it on camera. I walked in stores. I walked in restaurants. I walked in people's houses. That's who I used to be change with me but I'm, let me get back to these guys that are on podcasts if you want to be on those podcasts and you want to talk like a gangster and you want to tell stories you want to be a tough guy you expose yourself but then you hide and then you're blaming the FBI and there's several of you guys that have done that recently and obviously you know the FBI ain't going to come out and talk on, on these shows but I will and I really don't give a fuck of anybody what they think that I'm sticking up for the FBI or the police. Because I'm just being honest. And you guys want to be bullshit artists that cooperated or you guys want to be bullshit artists that are on the street and act like you don't have family members that are cops? You know, you're going to act like you don't have family members that are, that are agents or prosecutors? Because I know a lot of these that do. I says, and I know all of you know what I'm saying is true. Their job, they never betrayed anybody. They never deceived anybody. They never said anything different. Their job is to go lock up the bad guys. We were the bad guys. So what's your problem? You went and you signed something that said you would make a deal and you would go testify. Now, and I'll get something else straight. When the Eastern District wanted me to testify against Johnny Burke, who was already cooperating, and I like Johnny, but he was cooperating. He was out and he was meeting the, the prosecutor. He left the jail a couple of times in Citrus County. I had guys there, with a crew called the Dirty White Boys. They came and they gave me the information. I pulled Johnny. When Johnny came to Hillsborough County, I pulled him in the Sally Port. I knew one of the, one of the cops there, one of the uh, correction officers, to put him in the Sally Port. I know what he did. But Jackie Rizzullo, who's, I, I don't know what her name is now, at the time, was a prosecutor. She fought me day and night because I refused to testify against her. They told me she's going to write a letter to make sure I get life. I said, you write anything you want. I says, I'm not testifying against them. So when I hear these dumb stories from people, oh, they didn't want to use me, uh, whatever reason, whatever stupid thing you say. I always stand on my own set of rules and morals and my own ground and what I believe in. So that's what I believed in at that time. And this is what I believe in today. I believe when you have guys like, and I won't mention his last name, he was an, an ex-narcotics investigator. He investigated the shit out of me. Followed me everywhere. He was on one of my podcasts. Uh, his job was to lock me up. He knew me for years. He had sting operations against me. I never disliked that guy. He said that was his job to come after me. Years later, he's retired. We ran into each other. We're friends. We hang out. We get a beer. And I know for sure one fact. When I go get a beer with him and I walk in a, in a place, he's not going to set me up to get shot in the back of my head like these weak guys do. These same guys that talk about like they were in part of Afghanistan or a veteran, like they're tough guy shooting it out somewhere. They didn't do that. I know I shot it out places by myself. It wasn't me just shooting at somebody from behind. They were shooting at me. So are they going to get respect for me? Never. Never. They'll, the only respect they're going to get for me is if they're gentlemen. If they talk like gentlemen, act like gentlemen, carry themselves like gentlemen, are family men. Don't talk bullshit because if I ain't got nothing against you and you, I got nothing with you, I don't talk against you. I don't get up looking to talk against you. I don't go on computers looking against you. I don't go bother your family. I just mind my business, get on my life because I'm busy. 
I'm busy with good things. I'm busy with some bad things that happened in my life. But overall, I'm busy with my own personal life. And my my belief of some of these guys, some of these agents that I didn't like, is that's just life. Actually, you want to be honest, correction officers, probably about 70% of them are nice guys, 30% of them are pieces of shit. 30%. They abuse the inmates inside. They take advantage of the way they talk to them. They try to belittle them. And I think the reason for that is a lot of them couldn't make it or got turned down as police officers or FBI agents. But my dealings with, with the police, local police, state police, because I was investigators. Let's get this straight now, too. All my investigations came from the state of New York, the, the city of New York Police Department, uh, organized crime state uh, cases, federal FBI in Florida, New York, California, and Jersey, and Philadelphia, excuse me, and Interpol. I was on America's Most Wanted. For the Interpol had me on their Most Wanted list. So I've been through the gamut of every state, New Jersey, Philadelphia, New York, Florida, California, because I moved around all these states. And then added a country, Interpol, because I traveled in every country. I was involved with cartels. I was involved with the cartel in Mexico. I was moving drugs when I was involved with the cartel in Colombia. I had millions of dollars. And when I went on a run, those so-called good friends of mine that didn't have the balls to say two words to me when I was around started trying to steal my money, started trying to fix my ex-wife up with other gangsters, which they did. Started trying to send guys to my house to send messages to my girlfriend's house, to my child's mother's house, which is another room, a no-no, while I'm doing the right thing for them. This is the world of the mafia. But now let's talk about the FBI. None of them ever betrayed me. None of them ever did anything wrong to me. Only helped me. Only helped me to get in my head to be a different person, that you get a second chance at life, be a different guy. And I appreciate that. And the difference is I stay loyal to who's loyal to me. So when people say, oh, he's an informant, he's giving information, another bullshit, insecure lie by you guys that talk like that. Or the idiots that are typing and telling us how tough they are. If you're so fucking tough, you would have been out on the street, just like I said, killing every guy that ratted on all these bosses. Of all these bosses, excuse me, that were ratting on everybody else. You would have killed Al Diarco. You would have killed Joe Messina. You would have tried to kill uh, Gas Pipe. You would have tried to kill Sammy Gravano. You would have tried to kill Chucky Porter. You would have tried to kill all the others, Sal Vitale. What's the matter? Too far for you to find them? Not to, then it's not too difficult to find anybody. You get an investigator, you go find them, you find them yourself. Three quarters of the guys are living in a sunny Florida or a Virginia or South Carolina. What's the matter? You don't know how to get in a car. You can't drive that far. You can't get a bus ticket. But you, but you guys do a good, good deal of talking. You talk a lot of bullshit. And you just won't do it yourselves. You know why you won't do it yourselves? Because you're wearing underwear to get straightened out in some, certain crews now. Because you're wearing fucking wires. And those same underlings or associates or guys that just got straightened out, you ain't doing shit either. Because you got to take an order from your boss. That after he gives it to you, he's going to sit down and wear wide like Joe Messina. So why would you do that? You're going to trust it. So every morning you're going to wake up waiting for your boss to become a rat so he puts you in jail. And for all you guys that did do work, you were guys from the past. And there's some that are out there that are tough guys. I always say it. And there's some gentlemen that are still out there in the mob world. The problem is you're all straightening out jerk offs now. So there's no respect for the whole mob. Because you t you're taking guys that used to clean cars and get gas, they're big mouths, they, they got no balls, they're not tough guys, they're running around telling people they're made guys on telephones. It, it's, a, it's a joke. There's no big, great honor. The honor is to be a family man. The honor is to be an FBI agent. The honor is to be a, a, a veteran. The honor is to be a police officer going to do his job and go home. And I'm not talking about Epolito or any of these guys, Caracapa or any of these pieces of shit, or Phil Baroni. Those are the guys that betray their oaths. Those are the guys that play at two sides. Right? When, you, when you chose your side and you decided to change your life, then change it. 
I just, but if you really have doubts about changing your life, because I have none, that's why I talk the way I do. I don't give a shit or miss any of those guys. That's like, you know, you work at Merrill Lynch, you had your work friends, they were my work friends. They weren't true friends. My true friends are good guys. They all went to school, they're educated, they all work hard, they're family guys. The important thing in life is to spend time with your family. That's the truth about it. It took me a while to wake up when they betrayed me, but they betrayed me. That's why I left this country, to protect them. And that's why I stayed in penitentiaries in like Brazil, in Bongo 2 and Ari Franco for three years almost. Tortured, being beat up constantly by guards. It's a concentration camp. You guys that talk like that couldn't last one or two days there. And anybody who knows me from those penitentiaries knows what I went through. Knows I've been shot up. Knows I was stabbed up. Knows I, I got jumped several times. Part of the life. But when I hear these guys talk and I keep listening to who's a gangster and who isn't a gangster, everybody's full of shit. I got black friends that are so tight, grew close with me, the street, street guys, gentlemen. But as they got older, they changed the way they talk too. Because we realize that we live once, we ruin our lives the way we live them. It's because you have a lack of confidence. You don't have the right people that are telling you the right things in your ear. And there's so many of those guys that help me now and talk to me in a positive way and tell me, John, don't go back. And that's why I say that, what I said. If I got the whole pass, nobody would talk this way. Nobody. I know it. I says, then... I don't really care who else knows it. But when you have these trolls talking because they're so insecure, or you got these guys that never did a thing in the world and they did a podcast, I don't begrudge it. Do a podcast. I go, but you, you can't do a podcast like a gentleman. You don't feel like you're good enough, you're smart enough, but instead you got to talk bullshit about people you don't even know and you stay safe behind your little computer or you troll somebody on Instagram. Or you're jealous. What are you jealous of? Their clothes, their women, their nightlife, their travel ability, how they got a new life, they're successful. What are you, what are you jealous about? Not just about jealous of me, you're jealous about everybody. What are you jealous of? So, what do you hate FBI agents so bad? Did they tell you that you were, they were your friend and then all of a sudden fucked you? I don't think that's what happened. They went to work, they have a caseload, and they're supposed to try to lock us up. What are you hating them for? And then when they help you, you kiss their ass, and then you blame them later on, years later, because you have a little pressure on you. So if you have pressure on you, let's get the fuck off YouTube. Get off podcast. If you got pressure on you, scared of guys, then go move somewhere else. Go to South Dakota. Go to Alaska. But you want it both ways. You want to pretend like you're the tough guys, and you really didn't do much. You could throw names. He's all good at that. It's like a young kid that knows every every player on a baseball team, football team, basketball. can throw you stats. He had the best uniform around, and he sucked in sports. Those frustrated coaches. That's you guys. You just want to talk all bullshit about every name you know. And I sat with uh, Tony Salerno, and I know you. Who gives a fuck? You throw names out like like crazy, but you like I said, tell stories about yourselves. Tell us what you did. But I had to do this because I'm watching guys slowly that cooperated that keep blaming the FBI for their lives. And trust me, you guys, I know who you are. All you and some of them I know you're very personal. You just wouldn't have lasted one day the way I was tortured in some of these places I was in and the way I was treated because I wasn't arrested by the, the New York FBI. I was arrested by Florida FBI who moved me around, boxed me everywhere I went, four-pointed me for people who don't know. I had to shit and piss myself when I four-pointed because I went against them. I got it forced into solitary confinement. I didn't fight my, I didn't ask to go into solitary confinement. I fought it back and forth with my lawyers and I stayed on those compounds when I could, no matter what I did. I don't duck out of anything I ever done. I don't blame anybody for anything I did. These are all my choices. And when I have some of my close friends that were in that life, we're in big positions, and they say, oh, I kind of miss those. I go, miss what? Miss the scumbags that ask you to go meet them, and they're giving you up. They're informants. Miss you when you're in jail, and they're ratting on you because they didn't want to do five years. 
or the guys that talk bullshit because they're only facing three or 10 years. They're not facing multiple life sentences and death penalties. Or they know they never squeezed the trigger so they could talk like idiots. I said, there never was cameras out on the street. They didn't do shit. Nothing. What's going to make them do it now? What am I saying that's not true? Did you see anybody help John Gotti when he was dying? Did you see them go take care of the guys that gave him up, all the people that testified? Did you? Oh, I love him. I love him. I love him. They did shit for the guy. They just talk a good game. Did you see when Gotti went to jail? Where was all where was all the guys killing everybody that was ratting on him? Did you where where was the guys when Vinny when Vinny uh, Gorgeous went to jail for Joe Messina? What happened to all his guys? They just all ratted. All the bosses, Italian made guy, made guy, made guy. I'm sick of hearing it. Made guy, what the fuck is that mean? So somebody's cousin's uh, making a ton of money. Let's straighten this guy out because we could take five thousand off a week a week off from now, and this way we'll just tell him we're going to protect them. These are just bullshit weak guys. I see guys that that, that were complete jerk offs. I don't want to mention their names. They straighten them out. Straighten them out to do what? What are you doing? What'd you ever do back then? What are you doing now? I don't know where to end this, but I'll end it at this. You guys, like I said earlier, not one day you can you can go in my shoes. Not one day. And you're not men enough to be men and tell your kids the truth so they don't ruin their lives. It's all bullshit, your children. You tell them how tough you are. You know you're so full of shit. You tell them what gangsters you were when you, you know you're full of shit. And you, you got them believing it so they follow the same path. Instead of being honest and telling the truth about the life, about what I just said, about the FBI, and, and they're only doing their job. When you go to a gas station, you ask somebody to pump gas for you, he's doing his job. When you go to, to Wall Street and you ask him to buy stock, he's doing his job. So what's this bullshit about anybody else that's doing this job? How is it their fault? Did they, I, I just don't get it. What did they do that they tricked you? Oh, they pressured me. I heard that from one guy. They pressured me. They were torturing me mentally. Torturing you mentally. No, you weren't in Brazil Penitentiary. I was. They didn't torture you mentally. They tortured you physically. They stripped you down. They hog tied you and they fucking beat you with rubber hoses. They beat you with sticks. It's not something that you don't, you don't want to believe me. Go get in the computer. Go get a lawyer. See what Bangu 2 was about. See what Ari Franco was. There wasn't an advocate, not one allowed into that prison. You shit in a hole. You get beat all day. You have 56 guys in a 12-man cell. It rains inside your cell. There's no lights. There's one little light bulb that goes out. It's a third world country with the grid. Mosquitoes like you're in a jungle. It can go on and on and on. There's a group of guys. We're all friends still. Everybody knows the truth of those places. But when I hear you guys complaining and crying after you got a second chance a boatload of money that I didn't get. I didn't get a dollar. So the people think that I got money or something else. I didn't get shit. I got nothing. You guys got treated pretty fucking well by the New York fucking FBI. And yet you guys talk bullshit. So again, they're not going to speak out because they really can't. Retired or not, uh, some of these guys, they can't speak out. But I can speak out for all of them. Because there's not one of them that I met that wasn't a gentleman. Not one. And that's just being truthful. I got no agenda. I don't I don't give information. I don't testify. I don't anything. My life's completely a different road. My my the reason why I'm here is so kids, like I always say, don't follow this nonsense. Because who's gonna buy into this bullshit life? I know better. If I ever had a chance again as a young kid, I would never, ever step in the street like this again. And there's not enough bullets to kill all the guys you want to kill. And I learned that the hard way too, because no matter what I did in the past, there's another big mouth talking today that you can't just shut all their mouths. So you got to either learn humility and get rid of your ego and move on with your life and know that you're enjoying your life traveling around the world. You're, you're doing talks around the world, helping kids, saving kids' lives and doing things like I'm doing right now, speaking up for the FBI that can't speak up for themselves because they can't come out in the media and speak like I can about with these guys. And you guys that are talking against them, you guys are pussies. 
because I know exactly all your guys' cases and what you guys were doing or going to do if they didn't save your lives. And, and, and the funny part is some of these guys that I've talked to actually still stick up for you and give excuses why you're doing that, talking against them. There is no reason why you're talking against them. You're fucking weak. That's why you're talking against them. And, you, and you're intimidated by these guys, so you want to kiss their ass because you're afraid they're going to come after you. You made your choice. You already went against them. They're never accepting you back again. And a lot of those guys, whether people want to understand that or not, all my friends, I ain't got nothing against them. Some of them, there's a lot I can't stand, and there's a lot that are, are friends of mine. They just live a different life than me. I mind my business. And that's it. They mind their business. I got nothing to do with them. I don't go after nothing. I don't talk about them. I don't give information against them. I don't try to make money off their shit. I don't try to step in their world. I don't talk against them. I'm talking against the guys that cooperated now. And I'm talking against the guys that are typing away or telling somebody some bullshit untrue story about me. I was in a restaurant recently with four guys and they told some nonsense crap story. They're like little girls, man. There's like little girl scouts. This ain't the mob. Talking nonsense, talking stupid. If you run into me by yourselves, you don't say two words. I ran into a hundred guys already. I says you just wait. You have fifteen guys. I says when you have fifteen, twenty guys, then you've got a little balls up, and that ain't gonna help you either. Not for anything, because I might get hurt, but I will take a couple with me. But the the difference is, that's not the world I want. Go bother with your world. Go make your money, and and you guys. Go protect your bosses. Go get the guys that gave your bosses up. Or go get the bosses that gave you guys up. What are you waiting on? You want me to get your list? I can put the list to you. There's, there's not one or two. There's hundreds that you don't do shit about. I love these guys talking about, hey, he's all right, he's all right. He's, he's going to picture with his wife and kid on, on, on social media. What kind of jerk off? What are you teaching your son, you fucking clown? Anyway, subscribe, listen, pass it along, and uh, take my advice. Uh, live a good, conducive life for your children, for your family. Live a right life and uh, stay away from the streets. It doesn't bring you anything good. And for you guys that uh, forgot who saved your lives, the, the guys that you're talking about now saved your lives. Now you're talking against them. It's incredible. This is why most people say the same thing. Everybody from the streets garbage. Because just like this, you turn on a dime. The person said, that's feed you, you bit the hand. You know, and again, I'll, I'll end it at this. You guys betrayed me. And once that happened, it was over. Not one of you, not two of you. Dozens and dozens, 60 something guys went, and, and all my co defendants, Terry Scaglione, Ronnie Warnham, Steve Catalano, and I'm going to leave the other guy out because as much as he testified against me, I actually like him and I understand he had a rough life. And his, and his, his uh, uh, father that adopted him, you know, I, I liked him and really he got a bad break when he went to prison because after that he got treated like shit and he was abused. So for the rest of his, uh, that testified against me, he's actually did me a favor because you made me change my life and open up my eyes. So, no hard feelings. And I'll see you guys. And uh, remember, who uh, betrays who? Who took an oath to do the right thing and who took an oath to do the wrong thing? Stop playing the victim card. You ain't victims. All right, everybody, watch the uh, Mafia on VL, John and Gene show. Hit the subscribe button. DM me, send me messages, and I'll answer. Thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend.